Hey, what's up guys? It's Tobin. I'm going to talk to you a bit about web development workflow. Uh, I've been trying various things for web development workflow. Uh, what I'm talking about, and this is an image I stole from Paul Irish. Uh, what I'm really talking about is your iteration workflow. And iteration workflow, think of that as when you hit Control S on your code and then window over to your browser and hit F5 and then start swearing and then just repeat that cycle all day long. That's what I mean by iteration workflow. It's where you're running something like live reload. It's where you're compiling abstractions like SAS or CoffeeScript. It's where you might be running any unit tests for JavaScript. So I'll talk a bit about that and a little bit about build and optimization. That being where you concatenate and minify your code, optimize your images, things like that. Now, I was using, I've tried different things. I was using Yeoman, and I moved away from Yeoman. Um, Yeoman, the latest release, is really all about scaffolding. It used to be a wrapper around Grunt and Bower as well. Now it's really just scaffolding, and I don't have big scaffolding needs. So I moved away from that. Plus, the other thing it did is the way it used Grunt, you would almost have like 80 megs of stuff in your folder and uh, I just didn't want that. So I tried using Grunt by itself and Grunt is extremely powerful and a little bit on the complicated side. Grunt is a kind of like a JavaScript automation thing. It runs under Node. Extremely powerful. You can do anything you want with Grunt. But it's a little bit complicated. I was struggling to get it to do exactly what I wanted all the time. So then I ran across a NetTouch Plus article about Guard Guard is a Ruby thing. It's a it does most of what you would want Grunt to do. It does concatenation. It can do Uglify. It does live reload. It does SAS compilation or preprocessing, and it's really really easy to use. So right now I'm using Guard and I like it quite a bit. So that's going to show you how that works and a little bit about the build process I run after that to get everything in the final ready-to-go state. So, let's take a look. We'll use the quality of life dashboard uh, just because it's there. Let's put this over here. Let's pull up a code window and a terminal. Now, Guard is a Ruby thing and you install it essentially by how you normally install software. Of course, you have to have Ruby up and running. And then you just install the relevant gems that you need. You might want SAS or LESS or CoffeeScript or Concatenate or Uglify or there's a whole bunch of Guard plugins. Me, I'm just using SAS and Concatenate and Live Reload and that's it for Guard. And when you start Guard the first time, it's probably going to complain about your notification system and it will give you some pretty clear instructions on what you need to do for that. On uh, Linux is very easy, you just need to like put install a gem RB iNotify or something like that. On Windows, you'll have to do WDM, which means you'll have to have a Ruby development kit installed. It'll even walk you through all that. So Guard's very friendly about you not having all your shit together. So let's just start Guard. When you try to do guard, uh, when you have guard installed, you can type guard init and it will make a sample guard file. Let's talk a bit about that. I'll show you my basic project layout. I have the main folder, uh, which just has like the readme and the guard file and a little build script. Assets is where I have stuff that will get pre-compiled into other things. For instance, if I have Im my image sources, like a GIMP file, my SAS, and my JavaScripts that will get concatenated into one JavaScript. So that's assets. And then we have public, and this is what I'd actually throw out on a website. As HTML, it has where your SAS is going to get concatenated to. It has... Uh, where your JavaScript is going to get concatenated to. And it also has modernizer separate because modernizer is special and has HTML5 shiv. And if you don't put it in the head, you'll get that flash of on-style content that just yells rookie, rookie, rookie. 
Thus, this is main.js and main.css. That's because in my asset file, that's what I name these things. Actually, that's what I name it in for SAS is main.scss. And I'm telling it in the guard file to compile all the JavaScript down to main.js. So the guard file itself, it's uh, very, very simple. And you just type guard in it, and it'll make a sample one for you with all the extensions for guard you have installed. I'm just doing three things here. I'm loading the SAS module. I'm telling it to look in my input SAS folder, output it to public CSS. I'm giving it a couple of optional arguments. I'm saying line number is true, so I can, uh, it's basically source maps, so I can go check that stuff out. For debugging and all on start true means basically when I start guard, go ahead and remake that CSS file because I might have screwed around with it when guard wasn't running. For JavaScript, we're using the concat uh, gem and we're saying type JavaScript and we're giving it all the scripts we want to concatenate. You see I have quite a few here in the order we want them concatenated. So if page requires something in map, you want map to go first. And it's looking in the scripts folder and that's why you have some of this stuff here. What that's basically doing is saying the path from I have stuff in my scripts folder in several different folders because I'm kind of anal that way. So when I'm doing Twitter's bootstrap JavaScript, I'm just pulling the few modules that I need. I'm not pulling everything. And it's saying put it out into main.js. Notice there's no JS extensions here. When we give concat the type, it assumes that's on the end. So don't put .js. It'll look for .js, .js, and you'll have a bad time. Guard Live Reload is a live reload. Uh, if you haven't played around with Live re Reload before, once you do that once, you will do that forever. Live Reload basically sets up a, a server-side socket listener, and on the browser, you'll have an extension, a Live Reload extension, which is, that's exactly what it's called for Google Chrome. That is a listener. So it will make a WebSocket connection to your server side. And when you change JavaScript or CSS or HTML or whatever you want to watch for, it'll refresh that on the client side. No more of this windowing over and hitting F5, which is, you hear that and you go, that doesn't sound very hard. And then you think you're doing that all day long. So this is a much better way to go. And I'm just having it look at a few particular things. You can actually just do something like a uh, Simplest live reload would just be a single line and it could look something like, say, basically when any files with these extensions change anywhere in my project, reload them on the page. I'm pointing to particular places because I only care about for live reload that concatenated file. I don't want to change a source file and have it reload the browser and have that fire off my concatenate and change the destination file and have it do that in my browser again. So that's a very simple guard setup. If you've messed around with the grunt, you look at this and go, this is 12 lines. This is a good bit easier than, than grunt. Grunt is a lot more powerful, I have to say. But this is quite a bit easier. Now, we know the layout, we know guard setup. We'll just start guard by typing guard. And you see, because we had that argument, it went ahead and compiled our SAS. Here's our site. Now up here is our live reload extension. I'm going to click that. When you'll do, you notice over here, guard says a browser is now connected. Now I can do fun stuff. If I do a CSS change, like say we just want to change this background to plain old green. Hit save automatically goes over and changes that we didn't have to touch anything. Now for CSS, because it's CSS, it will just apply that without reloading the page. For HTML and JavaScript, it will reload the page. Example, 
see we'll go into our JavaScript page and our document ready and we'll just go console.log you know whatever some text hit save it's gonna reload that JavaScript and page you notice test comes out over here in our console I have to take this stuff out after I do it otherwise you'll see test the next time I refresh stuff on the production website because I'm I forget things now for our HTML, same sort of thing. We'll change this title, quality of life dashboard. Change it over here so it's blue. This is where I used to have the span where it said beta. Uh, we'll just we'll just type beta in there again. And now it's a beta site again. Beta just means that it probably doesn't quite work right yet. So that's live reload. That is how simple that is. I just start Garth and it's watching all my stuff and refreshing it in the browser not having to click over and hit F5 and start swearing and maybe something's caught in your cache and you'll have to go clear out your cache and ah, uh, nightmare live reload however you want to do it you should be doing it as a web developer you will thank yourself a thousand times over now this isn't doing everything I need to deploy a production site it is uh, it is concatenating stuff like this main.js, but you'll notice it's not minifying it. We want to minify it before we send it out. I don't like to minify. You can actually uglify this stuff right in Guard. I don't like to do that because when I'm using Guard, I'm debugging, and I don't want to have to read that ugly crap that minify does. So I will do that in a separate build process. So now let's take a look at that. We'll exit out of guard. To exit out of guard, you just type E or exit. It'll say bye-bye, because -bye, Ruby, is, Ruby is friendly. Now I have a build process in this build.sh. And uh, basically I made a sublime build process that just fires this, uh, just, just fires this script. And I have several different, basically it's doing three things. It's using a UE compressor for uh, CSS and it's compressing back into the same file and for main.js. I also run Trimage and Trimage is like a, a Linux version of Image Optim for Macs and it just optimizes all the images. That's still like one of the top things you do for web performance. Image optimization. People agonize over those little JavaScript libraries and they're sitting with a header image that's you know 300 kilobytes it just drives me crazy so to run this basically we're gonna go back to my guard file for no other reason that that puts sublime into the right folder and I'll just go tools build systems see we have this web app is something I made that just runs a script installed you can just hit build here just go control B and it's going to oh Oh, I, I had a minor uh, issue with uh, uh, Linux, so I'm actually running a, a different, yep, 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 throw all that stuff on there. I just have to install root UE compressor around here really quick. Boom, you just saw Linuxy stuff, congratulations. Now hit Control B again. It's going to go off. You see it's building. And it's finished in three seconds. We look at that main.js now. It's that ugly crap we give to our uh, public because we don't care what it looks like. We just want it to be fast when it goes out that direction. So that's the build. That's the. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's. You want to see what that build script looks like? It's like in, uh, let's see. It'll be where your sublime stuff is under packages and your user folder. And it's like, uh, let's see. This is basically all it is. This is a build script in sublime text. It's just an extension of sublime build running it under shell and I'm saying enable this when you see guard file just because that puts it in the right folder because this stuff is all 
based on relative path. Now I'm saying on Linux, run this build.sh. When I'm on Windows, I run build.bat. And I'm using UE Compressor. You could use uh, Node Uglify JS or Uglify CSS or whatever you want. But UE Compressor is just easy. So that is Guard with Live Reload, concatenating files, pre-processing SAS, a little build script on the end when you're ready to deploy. And that makes your life as a developer on the web so much easier. So that's it. I'm Tobin. I'll see you next month. I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about then, but I'm sure it will be interesting. See ya.